Hello and welcome to the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. Well, hello and welcome back to the Truth Seekers Podcast. If you've been following along, then you know that we have been learning about the life of Jesus. God the Father sent His only Son, Jesus, to be born as a human and live among us. The very presence of God was walking among us in the form of a man named Jesus. And while Jesus was on earth, His one mission was to do exactly what His Father, God, told Him to do. You see, Jesus was an obedient son. He only did what his father revealed to him to do. And while Jesus was on earth, he showed us what the father looks like. We know more about God because Jesus was God and he came and lived among us. So when we read about Jesus and what he did while he was here on earth, we also learn about who God is. Are you ready to learn more about God as we learn about Jesus? In today's story, I want you to think about what you learn about God as we watch what Jesus does. In our last story, we learned that Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach the good news that salvation had come. For years, the Israelites had lived in bondage to sin. No king could save them from their sin. No prophet could save them. They had been waiting for a Messiah to save them. Jesus stood before the Israelites and proclaimed that he was that Messiah. He had come to preach the good news, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He did not waste any time. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. Jesus taught with power and confidence because he knew who he was. He was the Son of God. Now, the day that Jesus began to teach in one of the synagogues, there was a man there listening to Jesus teach. But there was something different about this man. This man was possessed by a demon, which is an evil spirit. At some point in this man's life, he had opened up his heart to the lies of the devil. He had allowed an evil spirit to overtake his mind and his thoughts and his actions. He was oppressed. Does that word sound familiar to you? If so, it's because it was in the scripture verse that Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah. One of the things that Jesus had come to do was to release the oppressed. Do you know what it means to be oppressed? It means to not be free. If someone is oppressed, they are not free. They are controlled by someone or something else. This man was oppressed or controlled by an evil spirit. He was being controlled by a demon. And friends, I don't have to tell you how awful that would be. And so, as the man was sitting in the synagogue listening to Jesus speak, suddenly the evil spirit inside of him forced him to speak, and he cried out at the top of his lungs. He shouted, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Well, everyone became silent as they looked at this man who had just yelled at Jesus. What would Jesus do? Jesus looked right at that man, but instead of talking to the man, he spoke to the evil spirit who was oppressing the man. He said sternly to that evil spirit, be quiet, come out of him. Then suddenly the demon threw the man down before them all and came out of him without injuring him. The man was then no longer oppressed. He was free. Jesus had done what he said he would do. He released the man from being oppressed. The man was now at peace. He was no longer controlled by the evil spirit. All the people who saw this were amazed and they said to one another, What is this teaching? With authority and power he gives orders to evil spirits and they come out. 
and the news about Jesus spread throughout the surrounding area. And that was just the beginning, my friends. Jesus began to heal many. Many who were sick and oppressed, Jesus healed them. After this happened, Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Do you remember Simon, or also known as Simon Peter? Jesus had called Simon to follow him and be a fisher of men. Simon had been watching Jesus and listening to all that Jesus had to say. Simon invited Jesus to come to his home and speak, and now Simon's mother-in-law, who lived at his home with him, was suffering from a high fever. So they asked Jesus to help her. Jesus came into Simon's house where Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick, and he bent over her and rebuked the fever. He commanded the fever to go. And do you know what happened? The fever immediately left her and she was well. So well, in fact, that she got up and began to wait on Jesus and the others who had come with Jesus to Simon's home. Word was spreading fast about Jesus. All through the surrounding area, people began to say to one another, Have you heard of this Jesus? Did you hear what he has done? He healed Simon's mother-in-law of a high fever. He cast out an evil spirit from a man. He speaks with such authority. And so because the word had spread by the time the sun was setting, people began bringing to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. In many cases, demons came out of people shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ, the Son of God, and his time had not yet come to give his life. Jesus healed people all through the night. So many came to him that he had no time to sleep. So as the sun was coming up at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place and the people continued to look for him. And when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And so Jesus kept on preaching and traveling to the different towns all throughout Judea, preaching in the different synagogues. In all of these towns, Jesus would proclaim the good news, that he had come to set the captives free, to heal the sick, and to release the oppressed. While Jesus was in one of these towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. Now, truth seekers, you might remember that we learned about leprosy in our episode about Naaman, the army commander. We learned that leprosy is a horrible disease that was very, very contagious. If you had leprosy in Jesus' times, you were forced to live outside of the city with other lepers, away from your family and friends so that you would not spread it to others. It was a painful and lonely disease. This man who had come to Jesus must have been very desperate to come out in public and meet Jesus. For when he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. The man knew that Jesus could do anything, even heal him of his leprosy. Jesus looked at the man and reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said be clean. Do you know what happened next? Immediately the leprosy left the man. He looked down at his arms and hands and saw no sores. His skin was completely clear. How he must have rejoiced in that moment, ready to go and tell all of his friends and family. And Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. But the man couldn't help it. He went out and told the news widely. So the news about Jesus spread all the more, so much that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Jesus was surrounded by people so much that he could no longer openly enter into the city, but he stayed outside in desert places, and he often would withdraw to lonely places and pray. Dear True Seekers, what did we learn about God from watching and listening to Jesus in this episode? We learned that God is a God who is willing. He is willing. 
He is so willing because he loves us. He's willing to heal us. He's willing to hear us. He's willing to protect us. He is willing to be there for us. When the man said to Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus looked back at that man and he said, I am willing. We serve a God who is willing. He is good. He is for us. He is kind. He is a God who heals. God has the power to heal. And because Jesus is God, he had the power to heal while he was on earth. The people were amazed at the authority Jesus had to command the evil spirit to leave the man. Do you know what authority means? Authority means power. Jesus had the power over the evil spirit. The evil spirit had to do what Jesus said because Jesus is God and God is in control of everything. So much that even the evil spirits have to obey him evil spirit knew who Jesus was. It said to Jesus, you are the Holy One of God. The evil spirit knew it had no power over Jesus. You see, one of the reasons why Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. The devil has a limited amount of power here on earth until Jesus returns. He tries to get us to believe his lies and he tries to accuse us and he tries to oppress us. But the devil can never ever control God. The devil is not equal to God or Jesus. He must submit to God's authority. And so Jesus came to destroy all that the devil would try to do to oppress us or lie to us. Jesus came to set people free from their sins and from their bondage to the devil. We don't have to fear evil spirits. We don't have to fear the devil because we have Jesus living inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we have the same power that Jesus had to overcome the devil. We don't have to fear, but we can know that the Spirit of God lives inside of us. Another truth we learned is that Jesus would pray. Even though Jesus was God, he was God's son in human form, and he still needed to pray. Jesus would pray to his Father in heaven. That was how Jesus continued to stay in communication with his Father. He prayed. He prayed constantly while he was here on earth. He prayed so that he could hear from his Father and listen to the commands his Father was giving him so that he could obey. If Jesus prayed while he was here on earth, how much more do you and I need to pray? Prayer is the way we stay in communication with God. We need prayer. Through prayer, we talk to God just as Jesus did. We give him our request and we also listen to his still small voice speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. Prayer is how we listen and obey and stay close to the Father. Jesus would withdraw to a quiet place by himself to pray. Do you have a quiet place that you go to to pray? If not, can you think of one now? What is a good place that can be your prayer place to go to by yourself when you need to pray to God and spend time talking with Him? Is it in your room? Is it somewhere outside? Think about where you might be able to go to have a quiet place, just like Jesus did, to spend time praying and talking to God. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Luke chapters 4 and 5. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Father, I thank you that you have all authority and power over all things. You are in control, and that makes me feel safe. I don't have to fear the devil or any of his plans because you are more powerful than he is, and you cover me and protect me as I put my faith in you. I thank you that you are such a good God that you love to heal us and make us whole. Thank you for caring about us enough to send us Jesus so we would know more about you. Help us to find time to be alone with you, praying to you, listening to you, and then obeying you, just as Jesus did. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before we go, I have a few more reviews I'd like to read to you. This one comes from Krista. She says, my six-year-old daughter, Charlotte, or as we call her, Charlie, absolutely adores your podcast. It has made a major impact in her life. She talks in detail about each episode and we are embarking on a challenge to read the Bible in a year. All thanks to your loving way you present the Bible. 
Thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you for writing in, Krista. And thank you, Charlie, for listening. I love that you are going to read the Bible through in a year. I pray that that blesses you and that you learn so much more from it. This review says, this is from Danny, Michael, and Jack, ages 5 to 11. We love your podcast. It always cheers us up. Please keep doing it because it's great. I, Michael, liked the story on Joseph during Advent. I, Danny, liked your story on Queen Esther's banquet. I, Jack, like hearing all the stories. Mom says, I appreciate the work you do to bless families and children with the word of God spoken so beautifully. Thank you. Well, thank you, Danny, Michael, and Jack. I love that you gave me your specific episodes that you love and that are your favorites. So thank you for listening and for tuning in and for leaving that review. This comment came from Melissa Wellham. Wilhelm, she says, thank you from my heart of hearts for your podcast, the reflections, the stories and scripture for praying with us and for us. Thank you for your beautiful, joyful voice and heart for Jesus and his creation. You good and faithful servant bring all the glory to him this side of heaven. Thank you for dispensing his grace and love, care and kindness to me and my family. You are a true instrument of Jesus acting as his voice as it reaches my and my children's ears and hearts. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that blessing, Melissa, for speaking that over me. I love that. Thank you so much. This final one comes from Loa. She says, Happy New Year's. Love your podcast. You're the best. It helps me sleep. Well, Happy New Year to you, and I'm so glad that it helps you sleep. Thank you for that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to our time together next week.